A tant aimé le monde so qu'il a donné son Fils unique, son qui croit en lui obtiendra la vie éternelle. Chers frères et sœurs, Dear brothers and sisters, un congrès eucharistique international Eucharistic Congress ends each day through the celebration of the Holy, U the, of the Holy Eucharist. In other words, the memory of the Pasch of Christ. On this 16th of June 2008, I am very honored to preside this Eucharist as Archbishop of Quebec and President of the International Eucharistic Congress here in Quebec. The animation and the facilitation of this day was entrusted to North America because it's the anniversary of the arrival of the very first bishop on the North American continent when François de Laval came here on the 16th of June, 1659. François de Laval lived a holy life and served during 50 years the church in American land. He died on the 6th of May, 1708, exactly 300 years ago this year. The Pope John Paul II declared him blessed on the 22nd of June, 1980, as he declared Blessed Mary of the Incarnation and the young Catherine de Caquita from the American uh, uh, Mohawk group. As pilgrims of the Universal Church or as members of this particular church in Quebec, we are very happy all here to give thanks to God for the implantation of the church on, on, Ameri on French American soil 400 years ago. And we give thanks to God for the extraordinary development of this church throughout the whole continent, in multiple cultures, always around the Word of God and the Holy Eucharist. My best wishes, warmest wishes, go to all the members of this Congress with a feeling of particular gratitude towards those who come from very far away, such as those who come to us from Asia, from Africa, from Oceania, from Europe, and from Latin America. Your presence in this Eucharist, International Eucharistic Congress manifests quite clearly the witness of your faith and of your hope in the Lord. For this, I thank you. May God bless this assembly that represents the Universal Church acting in a moment and a time of praise, adoration, and intercession for the life of the world. God, God so loved the world that he gave us his only son, who became bread of life for us. God so loved the world that he prepared at, le at length this supreme gift so that through faith we might receive it and be nourished. God loved the people of Israel with a love of predilection. He gave them the Torah and made a covenant with them sealed in the rite of blood described in the book of Exodus. Moses said to the people, Here is the blood of the covenant, which on the basis of these words the Lord concluded with you. And the people answered, All that the Lord has said, 
we will put into practice and we will obey. Les Saintes Écritures témoignent the Holy Scriptures show that this alliance or covenant was broken by the people of Israel, but God nevertheless never ceased to love his people and to remind them through the prophets the betrayed love. God brought his people to the desert, fed the people with manna, and protected it against all the snakes and serpents. God finally led his people to the promised land, then to the bitter experience of the exile and this, its dispersion among the nations, which brought about the loss of a great number of people and the nostalgia of some form of return to Jerusalem. When the hour was accomplished, God fulfilled his plan, supreme plan of covenant with his people by sending Jesus as mediator of the new and eternal covenant. Jesus gave himself over to proclaim the reign and to form his disciples so as to establish around the disciples and around Mary the foundations of the church. His prophetic action was rejected by the author religious authorities of the time and by the civil authorities of the time, and he was condemned by Pontius Pilate to suffer the cross. But Jesus filled with a greater love than all the hatred of the world offered himself up as a sacrifice in order to repair the sins of the sinners and to reconcile the world with God. God received the offering of love of his Son, accomplished once and for all on the cross. And God glorified once and for all Jesus through his resurrection among the dead. We believe in this infinite love of the Father, and we believe also in the risen Christ, as well as the Holy Spirit, who comes into our hearts through baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. May we believe even more fully in this Eucharist, in these marvelous days of Eucharistic celebration. Brothers, beloved brothers and sisters, we celebrate now the memorial of the offering of love of Jesus and of his Passover. The Lord comes to meet us. He challenges us, calls us, and he takes us and places us in the heart of his offering of love for the salvation of the world. By giving ourselves over to him in love, let us ask to be ourselves sources of love for the world. The one who believes in me, says Jesus, from his side will flow living waters. May the Holy Spirit increase our faith and open our hearts to the gift of God who wants to flow in us and reach through us the life of the whole world. Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta carried painfully in her heart the distress of the poor and the thirst of love that people had of the heart of Jesus. She carried, Teresa carried all of this as one single mystery. May we also partake in the gift of God who wishes to satisfy all the poor. We celebrate this great International Eucharistic Congress at a time where all of humanity faces the possibility of a food crisis which is sudden and disastrous. Certain basic foods like rice and corn 
have seen their prices triple or double or triple in a few weeks. And this to the great anguish of the poor who do not have the capacity anymore of buying these foods at exorbitant costs. This situation is intolerable. A quick and concerted action by governmental instances and by the United Nations is necessary and urgent in order to help those who are hungry and in order to establish the balance of food production and in the trade relationships. Let us pray so that the understanding of justice Let us pray for the, so that the understanding of justice overcome the greed of profit among those who have economic power. We ourselves who now celebrate the bread of life, the bread of, of heaven, the gift of God for the life of the world, we cannot take this bread of life without concerning ourselves also of the fate of those who are hungry. Let us now seek to know and understand the causes of this food crisis and to require some kind of political action, all while committing ourselves for a greater and more just distribution of basic foodstuff without forgetting water so that the poorest not be excluded from the common table. In a few moments, in the heart of our assembly, the Lord will come from heaven to make himself present sacramentally under the form, or the most humble form, and the most substantial form of the Eucharist. The Lord will come down right into the core of our hearts through communion in order to inhabit us, in order to transform us and to make us know the height, the width, the depth and of the heart of God. This is my body given over for you. This is my blood given over for you. For the new covenant, Take and eat, take and drink, do this in memory of me. We will now communicate, take partake of communion in the, the joy of the sacred rite of the new covenant. Let us remember that the Lord wants mostly for us that we live out the love that this rite means, indicates, and that Jesus is symbolized on the Holy Thursday when he washed the feet of his disciples. Aware of the commitment of our baptism, let us say yes once more to the gift of faith and yes to the gift of divine life. Let us say yes to the blood of the new covenant, which commits us to love up to the point of sacrifice. Let us say once more yes to the sharing of the daily bread with all those who are hunger by asking the Holy Spirit to renew our enthusiastic fidelity in the Holy Eucharist, the gift of God by excellence. Amen.